Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. Listen, you know it, I know it, keto is hot on the streets. All right, everybody's talking about this ketogenic diet, and though we talk about and highlight many different nutritional approaches here on the show, I just want to make sure that you have an array of options and uh, great tools and resources in your superhero utility belt to use at your disposal. But for me, I want to make sure that I'm bringing on the very best people in their respective fields to talk about these different nutritional approaches. And today I've got one of the best people on the planet. He lives this. He walks his talk. He's been doing this for several years. and He's been a friend of mine for several years. This is his fourth appearance on the show. Fourth. You know, so basically every hundred episodes, he's jumping in here and sharing his wisdom. And uh, he's just one of my favorite people, period. We got a great workout in this morning, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit. But um, this keto lifestyle, to learn from him and his new book, Complete Keto, which I have right here. And it's such a fortune to be able to have advanced copies of uh, great books like this. But listen, it's far more than just your average cookbook. There's so much in here. We're going to talk about that today. But I want to make sure that you have some of these little insights about the ketogenic approach, why it works, myths around it, and we're going to dive into that today. Well, listen, he just flew in red eye. I think he had two red eyes, which is kind of weird to have one red eye, I guess, but two red eyes. And as soon as I contacted him today, I was like, do you want me to bring you something? You know, I'm going to bring you something. So how about some Four Sigmatic? And so I did. I brought him some Four, Sig Four Sigmatic to the gym. No, first of all, he texted me back. He was like, all of it. All right. And I brought him some to the gym. And here's why. So when we're traveling, when we've got a lot of lot going on, when we're dealing with stress, one of the things that can happen is our immune system is going to get a hit. And here's why I'm a big fan of medicinal mushrooms. Medicinal mushrooms, first of all, they're just mo they're known as immunomodulators. So this means that it's not pushing your immune system in one way. Synthetic drugs push your immune system in one direction. It's either suppressing the immune system or it's lifting the immune system up. These medicinal mushrooms have an, an innate intelligence that interact with human cells that can lift your immune system if need be or bring it down if need be. So you were like, why would I want my immune system to be down? Autoimmunity, for example. That's when your immune system is overactive. And so that's what's so beautiful about it. Specifically, let's look at chaga. Several studies indicate that chaga significantly increases the effectiveness and activity of your natural killer cells. So these are immune system weapons that literally are getting trained and activated to go and take out pathogens that you might be exposed to. And probably the biggest factor that I really love about Chaka is its ability to increase your body's natural production of antioxidants, specifically superoxide dismutase, which is a super antioxidant. Again, safeguarding your, your immune system, safeguarding your DNA, powerful. I'm telling you, it's just like, Chaga's, it's like the Kevin Costner of, the, it's like the bodyguard, all right? Rishi as well. This is one of my favorite things. I just had a cup of Rishi. I usually do this before bed, but it's a mediator of inflammation. Specifically, polysaccharides and Rishi were found to enhance the proliferation of T cells and B cells. Now, these are immune system uh, components, and I did a master class on what those are, their roles. Make sure to check it out. I'll put it in the show notes for you. 10 simple ways to fortify your immune system function that I did not too long ago, but these are directly supporting and in, in the right way. Again, it's immunomodulating, supporting your immune system. Also, sleep. Rishi, this was a study published in Pharmacology, Biochemistry, and Behavior, found that the renowned medicinal mushroom Rishi, taken before bed, significantly decreased sleep latency. That means you fall asleep faster. Increase overall sleep time and increase non-REM AKA deep sleep time as well. So even if you're going to be short on sleep, this can help to support you getting high quality sleep in the time that you are getting. All right. So huge fan of these. I get mine from Four Sigmatic because it's dual extracted, organic, simple, and easy to use. The dual extraction is taking an alcohol extract and a hot water extract. So you're actually getting all the nutrients we're looking for that they're talking about in these studies. You don't even know what was the extraction method done, right? So head over there, check them out. My cabinet is full of Four Sigmatic products. I love them so very much. It's foursigmatic.com forward slash model. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model. 15% off everything that they carry. 
get yourself some. I brought my guest this morning. When he texted me all of it, I brought him a box of the Four Sigmatic Cordyceps Chaga Coffee. All right, so to be supportive of the people I love, hooking them up with the shrooms. Head over, check them out, foursigmatic.com forward slash model. And now let's get to the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review titled, A Show That Can Change Your Life If You Let It by Gazelle M909. Dear Sean, after becoming a regular listener of the show, I decided I needed to meet Sean in person. I needed to know that this amazing person who transpires such positive energy through a microphone actually exists. I flew out to St. Louis from Florida with the little college tuition money I had left to buy a flight. I just want to say that the positive energy Sean beams off in person is exactly more than I imagined. I was too shy to go up and introduce myself at the Take Control Conference, but I just want to say thank you for sharing your story so openly and vulnerably. Knowing that such kind people exist in the world makes me want to check my character every day. Wow, that's just so powerful. And I I don't really even know what to say. That's just, thank you so much for sharing that. You should have came and said hi to me, got a hug on, you know. I, but um, it's just such a testament to you and who you are to take action and to come and be a part of something like that. And thank you for seeing me and my character and my and my intention. And I just appreciate that so much, and I appreciate you. Everybody, thank you for heading over to Apple Podcasts and leaving reviews for the show. If you've yet to do so, please pop over and do it. All right, I appreciate that so very much. And on that note, let's get to our special guest and topic of the day. My guest today is my friend, my man, New York Times bestselling author, Drew Manning. Back for the fourth time, all right? It's not a three-peat, is it quad-peat? Is that what we call it? I think so. (laughs) New York Times bestselling author, the man behind the Fit to Fat to Fit movement. He is the guy who purposely gained, he was super fit, gained 75 pounds and went through that. He, He... tracked everything and shared his experience of gaining weight, experiencing what it was like to share uh, with everybody and to get a better connection with the people that he was working with, the people that he was wanting to teach and to inspire. And he did that over six months. And then the following six months proceeded to work to lose that 70, 75 pounds. And it was not what he thought it would be cracked up to be. And through that process, he's developed so much compassion and empathy and vulnerability and he's just a man out here sharing knowledge at one of the highest levels and i'm inspired by him grateful to have him in my life brand new book complete keto is out get your copy asap it's going to be a great addition to your library Welcome back, my man. Thank Drew. you, Sean. I really on, appreciate you, man. Yeah, it's, uh, hopefully your audience isn't sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe there's some new followers that haven't heard of me or, you know, even this is the fourth time. It's always so like that, man. <laughs> like, you know, we've made some big progress over these years, you know, you yeah. and I. Yeah. And it's just like a totally different reality. It's crazy. Yeah, that was uh, what, like two years, two, three years ago that I was first on. I think it was in Hawaii recording that podcast, you know, and this is our second time in person. So I'm just super appreciative that you're allowing me to come on and share my story, man. So oh, man, it's only because you, man, you know, like you're one of my favorite people. I Thank mean you. That. Likewise. man. And you know what? <clears throat> What's so crazy is since then you started your own show. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say, you know, that I like nut gave you the nudge or like kicked you out of the nest or whatever. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's it's out there. It's killing it. And such great episodes, man. Yeah, thank you so much, man. You're yeah, you were the one who kind of challenged me to do it, and so I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna listen to Sean. And so you know, I learned how to do it, and here we're, I'm coming up on uh, episode 200 soon. Yes, so yes. it's fun, man. It's powerful, and you know, you're uh, one of the few ones that I look up to in the industry um, to see how to do it right. You know, wow. and so I don't think there was any other podcast I would actually go on four times, you know, other than yours. So so I'm appreciative, man. Definitely, bro. Well, just good having you back. And I want to talk about, first of all, you know, I've seen you live this lifestyle. You know, Mm -hmm. I remember it was a couple of years ago. uh, We went to out to eat here in St. Louis. It's a good meal. And I'm just in my head because, you know, I'm around these people in the the field and a lot of them, especially the people who are in my life, walk their talk. Yeah. And I was just fascinated, honestly. I was like, okay, obviously he's doing the, you know, ketogenic approach, but I was surprised by how little you ate, Yeah, you know, and yet you're carrying this muscle mass around (laughs) that, you know, we worked out this morning. Yeah. And so my first question is, 
Can you, which we know the answer, but yeah. how are you able to maintain your muscle mass eating keto when we, we we're programmed to believe you need all these carbohydrates to yeah. do that? Yeah, that's a great question. I get asked that all the time. And uh, this is the interesting thing. Like when I first switched over to keto, I was nervous because I was like, you know, I'm going to lose my muscle mass What if I don't eat every two or three hours, which is what I used to teach people, <laughs> you know, right. like, hey, if you don't eat every two or three hours, you got to keep your metabolism up. Yeah, you're you know, going to get me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're going to go catabolic. <laughs> There's a funny uh, episode of, um, oh, Brooklyn Nine, Brooklyn Nine Nine yeah, with the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Terry Crews, and he has like his little timer. Yeah. And he's like, I can feel my body eating its muscle because I haven't eaten. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? Little side story and shout out to Susan, uh -huh. who's a producer, television producer for Fox. Oh, really? And she sent me an autographed Brooklyn Nine Nine what? poster with all the actors. <laughs> oh my no goodness gracious! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love that show, man. It's one of those like. Little brain candies yeah. for me. You it's, know, it's, so. a it's a classic. And so I remember the episode of him, like, I can feel my, my body eating its muscle just to survive because it's been an hour since I last And ate. we can relate to that. <laughs> like when he says like, yes, <laughs> but that's not the case. It's not the case. So I went from eating six or seven small meals a day to, you know, eating once or twice a day. And here's the thing is that my brain felt optimal. My digestion was better because it, I mean, our generation, our parents' generation, we've always had access to food, right? Mm -hmm. We've always had, you know, grocery stores. Or nowadays, you can push a button, Uber Eats shows up, there's yeah. food on demand. And so we've never had to go a long period of time without food. Yeah. And so um, I was nervous about that. But um, it's so interesting, you know, uh, once I did keto, my brain was sharper, my digestion was better, and I wasn't a slave to food. You know, I used to be that guy with the big, you know, Tupperware containers and had my alarm set and got each meal, six meals plan for the day and so um to go from that to eating once or twice a day and feeling optimal and being able to maintain your muscle mass and how it works um is ketones are a very protein sparing um energy source for our body so your body will preserve its lean muscle mass and use fat as its primary source of fuel and so for me yeah i eat once or twice a day and i have so many people tell me like you don't eat a lot and now that i'm getting older it's more for anti-aging, longevity purposes. I'm not trying to be the biggest, strongest, fastest, you know, Thor-looking guy in the gym, you know, anymore. And so I'm okay with, you know, maintaining what I have yeah. and, you know, feeling sharp, mentally sharp uh, up here and having better digestion and hopefully living uh, longer. Yeah, man. And, you know, the, what's crazy, and I haven't said this to you before, but you, like, look a little younger, you know, despite <laughs> Thanks, all man. of the traveling, all the stuff you've done. <laughs> you know, over these couple of years. And it's just a testament, man. And mm -hmm. there's so much solid science and you put a lot of it into the book yeah. uh, regarding the ketogenic diet and anti-aging benefits yeah. as well. But, you know, I was just fascinated by that, by like, how is he able to maintain? <laughs> but my question, next question is, would somebody be able to gain mm -hmm. muscle mass we talked about this earlier a little bit, but it's yeah. just like, obviously it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like you gotta get, you know, like be more diligent about eating. And when you're so satisfied mm -hmm. with the way that you eat, like it's more difficult to eat overeat. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's a good point. Um, I have uh, two friends that are doctors that did a really cool study where they took two sets of bodybuilders and put them on a, a 12 week um, test. One was a, a ketogenic group of bodybuilders. These were already big dudes, right? Yeah. And then the other group was a traditional bodybuilder diet, right? And so what they did for over the course of 12 weeks was they both were at a calorie surplus and they both lifted heavy. And uh, what happened at the end of the 12 weeks was both groups um, put on the same amount of lean muscle mass in 12 weeks. Uh, it was roughly the same amount, but the ketogenic group lost fat mass during that time. And the other group that was high protein, high carbohydrate they actually gain fat mass during those 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can, but you have to be diligent. You have to be at a calorie surplus. You have to lift heavy. And um, and so it is possible. Yeah. You know, wow. either way you yeah. do it. And I don't think one way is superior to the other way. Um, it just it just depends on what fits your lifestyle. That sounds too like that sounds too like Indiana Jones, like <laughs> holy grail for me, man. Because that's the thing that we want. Can we gain muscle and, and lose, lose fat? fat. <laughs> at the that's same what time. everybody's looking for. And 100%. we were programmed to believe that you can't do both. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Especially in this kind of same, not exactly at the same time, but just in that same parallel. It's just like bulking season, cutting season. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. So Choose wow. one or the other. It, it just really turns that on its head. Yeah. But, you know, again, I want to reiterate that, especially, you know, these high quality fats from real food sources, yeah. 
you just feel more satiated. It's more difficult to overeat. Yeah. And that's for some people, it might sound like it's even a dream or mystery mm -hmm. that you actually are, oh, good for you. Like you're, <laughs> you, you're satisfied, huh? But for real, you yeah. know, it's like, it's much easier to over, even sweet potatoes, you yeah. know, like I love sweet potatoes. It's easier to eat more calories of sweet potatoes. Yeah. Sweet potato brownies as well. But <laughs> eating like, chicken thighs yeah. or you know a salmon like yeah. you can't eat that like your body literally those those proteins the fats shut off that ghrelin mm -hmm. turn on leptin and you just feel more satisfied <laughs> yeah remember the old uh, pringles commercials once you pop you can't stop oh man forget about <laughs> it right when it comes to those kinds of foods man we can over consume those but yeah try and overeat a steak with butter you know your body's gonna let you know when you've had too much steak with butter you know it reminds saying? me of <laughs> Was it the great outdoors? Yes. Oh, John Candy. John Candy, where he didn't finish the gristle. The from steak. <laughs> oh my goodness! Shout out uh, to that movie. Yeah. When I was a kid and I saw it, I just <laughs> rewound like the part where you know he shot the bear's butt yeah. and like the butt was. It was just like for me, it's the funniest thing. But you know that scene where he was trying to eat that steak. And, yeah. Man. Yeah. It's just one of those things. But if it was donuts, like you see these food competitions. Yeah. They're you know they're eating like you know bread. Yeah. Right. But man, yeah, that's just crazy, man. Yeah. So I would love to talk now a little bit about, you know, I know that this is something you do. This is your lifestyle. It's given you all of these benefits. You've impacted the lives of countless people at this point with your programs. Yeah. Now the official book yeah. is out. But I want to know what drew you personally. Like, why did you decide like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take on this ketogenic approach. Yeah. What drew Drew, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what drew Drew? When I said, I was like, oh. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, what drew me to start keto? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, I was listening to a, a a podcast with Dr. Dom Diagostino, who's like the you know the the superstar of the ketogenic diet. He's been on Joe Rogan a few times and Tim Ferriss a few times, and he he's he's the guy. And so he was talking um, to Tim Ferriss uh, about how he did a 10 day fast, and after his 10 day fast, he deadlifted 500 pounds for 10 reps and did 585 for one rep. And this was 10 days with no food. I'm like, how is that humanly possible? And so I listened to the episode and learned about all the scientific research that has been done on the ketogenic diet that I had no idea. I thought it was just another diet to, you know, lose fat, you know, and lose weight. Um, so after the episode, I was blown away by it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do uh, experimentation, right? I'm, I'm a self-experimenter. Why yeah. not give it a try? And so I, I did it. I fell in love with it because of those reasons that I mentioned, the mental clarity and the improvement in cognitive function. I wasn't a slave to food anymore, better digestion, and I could still kill it in the gym. And so after those 60 days, I was like, man, I love the way my brain feels. Mm. But here's the surprising thing. I didn't lose any fat. I didn't lose any weight. I wasn't trying to necessarily. Mm -hmm. And I was already lean to begin with, and my performance in the gym was, you know, about the same. It wasn't like, oh, now I'm a superhuman, but I felt like Bradley Cooper from Limitless, mm -hmm. like taking that pill mm -hmm. and, you know, doing algorithms and speaking different languages. <laughs> Just kidding. That didn't happen. <laughs> but I felt like that. I'm like, wow, my brain feels so amazing. Yeah. And so that's what sold me on it, and that's why I love to do it. You know, it's not for, you know, fat loss or weight loss for me personally. You, yeah. That's a, a byproduct of any diet. You can lose weight on any diet, right? Let's be honest. But the thing I love about keto is, is the improvement in mental clarity for a lot of people because their brain is running off of a different fuel source. Yeah. It's running off of ketones. Um, there's a great book called Unbreakable. It was a movie too. And the book is way better. There's a scene uh, or there's a part in the book where this guy, you know, he his plane gets shot down during World War II. This is a true story. He, and he survives at sea, I think, for 40 some days, him and this his crew. Um, and after like a few days of suffering, no food, no water, being out, you know, stranded at sea, there's this moment that he talks about where him and his friend wake up one morning and they had the most remarkable mental clarity uh, ever where they could remember the most intimate details about their childhood and have conversations for hours about all these small details that, you know, that most of us forget about from their childhood. And it clicked for me. I'm like, man, he probably didn't know it, but he's in ketosis after four days of no food, right? Yeah. And the mental clarity that he experienced, that's kind of what it's like. It's this euphoric feeling of, you know, your brain's awake and it's a different fuel source because most of us have been running off glucose and sugar and, and we're, you know, we go through these highs and lows and highs and lows and ketones is a totally different fuel source. And so that's why I got into it. And that's why I wrote the book was to help people, not just with physical transformation, but also on the mental and emotional side. And I feel like a clearer brain, uh, you know, can help us be more optimal as humans, mm -hmm. but can help us with a complete transformation on the mental and emotional side, because we're thinking more clearly and we're open to new ideas like meditation yeah. And how can I 
how can I further optimize myself? And it, 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 that's why I wrote the book. Mm, man, that's powerful. That's so powerful. I didn't even, until I read this, until I read your, your new book, Complete yeah. Keto, I didn't think about, um, for you personally, that that was one of the 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 experiences that you had was this was a, a tool or a bridge for you to be more vulnerable for yes. you to be more open to change and like and i think it came at a good time in your life yeah for all of that to happen it just was really supportive of that because you're even it's you're a different person than i knew two and a half years ago yeah. you know not different you're a more uh more of you you're <laughs> yeah. more you yeah you know and it just seems like there's more freedom mm -hmm. and it just seems like you know, like you're just so clear. Yeah. You know, so it's really cool to see, man. And Thank by the you. way, so I want to talk about really quickly, one of the things. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so in talking about the brain. Okay. You say in your book, uh, well, your brain loves ketones as much as Beyonce <laughs> loves bedazzled body suits. <laughs> she does. <laughs> <laughs> like you put that in the book and I was like, first of all, beehive. I don't know if you know about the beehive. They're very, very aggressive. You uh -huh. know, these are the, th this is her nation, her community. Yeah. Right. So I'm just like, I don't know if they're going to be taken aback by this, but she does. You know, she does <laughs> love bedazzled bodysuits, but your brain loves ketones. Yeah. So you said in the book, ketones provide your brain with really efficient fuel as well as neuroprotective benefits. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Yeah, that's a great question. I first learned about this from Dr. Dom, right? Who, who he his research is funded by the Department of Defense, right? So he works with Navy SEALs who do these deep si deep dive missions uh, where they're underwater for long periods of time and a lot of these Navy SEALs suffer from brain toxicity, right? And so he was developing a way, a method for them to protect their brains from this. And that's where he started using exogenous ketone supplementation, uh, ketone salts and ketone esters to see if that would give their brain a neuroprotective benefit, which it did. Mm, and wow. that way these these guys in the military didn't have to, you know, get into ketosis by eating a ketogenic diet before they went on a mission. You know, they have to be ready at all times. And so by supplementing with something that is taken, ingested ex exogenously, um, and being able to give those benefits yeah. uh, to the brain is remarkable. And that's when I first learned about it. And now there's research with you know Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and diseases of the brain where, and even concussions and traumatic brain injury, um, where exogenous ketone supplementation or just being in a state of nutritional ketosis can help provide those neuroprotective benefits for the brain. So uh, I've, um, I'm, I've learned from some people like UFC fighters who work with doctors that uh, will have them um, on either a nutritional uh, keto approach or taking exogenous ketones to help them recover from concussions, right? And so it's, um, it's kind of newer research, and that's yeah. what I've learned from uh, following like Dr. Dominic D'Agostino and, and these guys that this is what they study. And you, if anybody's wondering what <laughs> he's sipping on right now, like <laughs> Drew's got the orange Kool-Aid. Got the orange stuff, purple stuff, <laughs> Sunny D. <laughs> man, I mean, I love that purple stuff. Man. I gotta be honest. I you thought know? it was better than Sunny D. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny D was just kind of off. Like yeah. it didn't taste like orange. It tastes like orange juice mixed with milk. Let's be honest. That's what it tasted like. Truth. Great marketing. Truth. When they were had the commercial, it was like apple juice. Some purple stuff, you know. I'm like, ah, I want that purple stuff. That's I, that's my favorite. That's funny, so yeah, man. But uh, another thing that you talk about, and mm -hmm. you mentioned several times, and I just want to quote you directly from the book: um, being able, not being a slave to food. Yeah, that's such a powerful statement. And one of the things you talk about was how ketones burn longer, mm -hmm. basically. So it's a more uh, efficient fuel source and yeah. it doesn't operate like carbohydrates which are and I want you to give that example but you say sure. that your body can store up to about 3,000 calories of glucose at one time which most people burn through in a day or two or you can tap into about 30,000 calories of stored fat for fuel so our bodies have all of this calories just stored mm -hmm. that we're not using because we're constantly bringing in new carbohydrates yeah. and it takes several days to burn through those exactly so Let's talk about the fuel source yeah. of carbohydrates versus getting into ketosis. Yeah, that's a it's a great um, it's a great conversation. So here's the thing that's going to blow people's minds. You know, a lot of us don't think we can go a long period of time without food, right? Um, but the world record for number of consecutive days fasting is 382 days. You guys, it's 
Look it up. It's by a 460-pound man in the 1960s who was monitored by a doctor. It's published in medical literature. You can look up this, this experiment. He was had water and vitamins and minerals to keep him alive, but he lived off of his own stored body fat. He lost over 200 pounds in 382 days. It's the longest, you know, uh, monitored fast that we know of that's been published. Um, so I'm not saying you or, or I could live that long <laughs> without food, but we don't know, you know, what our body is capable of um, unless we experiment with it. And so most people out there, if they stop eating today, ketosis is your body's natural backup system to, you know, help you survive for long periods of time. Um, it's just that we've never experienced that because we've always had access to food and we've been told to eat three square meals a day since we were young, since our parents were young. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of people have never experienced what, what that's like, but your body can literally tap into its stored body fat and use that as a slow burning, sustained energy source for a long period of time. Without actually starving yourself. Yes, without actually starving yourself. You know, that's how I was able to do a seven day fast. Uh, I've done some four day fast and some three day fast and uh, being in a state of ketosis, you know, uh, helped me, you know, be able to do that a lot easier than if I ate a, a huge pizza and then started my seven day fast. Um, because that's the thing is we'll eat these carbohydrates, you know, you know, we'll carb up before a race or something, store as much carbs as we can. But that's why you see marathon runners and endurance athletes bring in these goos and these, you know, these quick, you know, sources of glucose because they're burning through it so quickly. And the, the picture I paint in the book is, is, you know, ketones or glucose is kind of like the, the, if you throw paper or lighter fluid on a fire, that fire is going to instantly light up and increase in, in the size of the flames, but really quickly it's going to come right back down. Yeah. And that's like glucose. You burn through it so fast. And then ketones are like the, the logs or the coal of the fire. It's a slow-burning, sustained energy source that stays heated for a long period of time. And we can tap into that stored body fat as an energy source of an efficient source of energy if we, you know, um, get into a state of ketosis, which there is a transition. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So let's talk about that because we... And I mentioned earlier that we can have these benefits of your body using its stored body fat mm -hmm. without starving ourselves. So number one, you can go through, you know, fast more efficiently, mm -hmm. which has all these anti-aging benefits, immune system benefits, yeah. the list goes on and on. But you can actually just live your life and still eat food, yeah. <laughs> you know, and not literally starve yourself and continue to eat and still be supportive of your body's natural ability to go into ketosis. And so... What I want to ask you about is how the transition, like yeah. you, there's terms out there now, people like, <laughs> I got the keto flu, the keto flu. you know, <laughs> like all this. So how does this transition happen? How long does it take? Yeah. So that's a great question. And it's different, you know, depending on the person, right? It's different for each person. So, um, you know, if you, if you fast, if you stop eating, probably within 24 to 48, 48 hours, every human, uh, almost every human on this planet will s shift over into a state of ketosis where your body starts producing ketones. It's burned through all of its glucose, right? And then it's, it's got to find an alternative fuel source, right? How are we going to survive past these two days with no food? Uh, your body will start producing ketones, right? It'll break down fatty acid and through the liver, you know, converts them into ketones, which are a fuel that your brain, muscles, and organs can use as a fuel source. And so um, it's different for each person. If you transition from a carb-heavy diet to a ketogenic diet, it'll probably take your average person maybe two to five or seven days max to be in a state of nutritional ketosis. And a way to track that is by testing your blood ketones. You prick your finger like on one of those, you know, it looks like a glucose meter, mm -hmm. and you prick your finger and you, you put the blood in a strip and it'll tell you what your blood uh, ketone levels are. Anything above a 0 0.5 is nutritional ketosis. And so you can actually test it to see if you're in ketosis or not. But your average person is going to take like two to seven days. So really quick, the testing method, so that's the is that the preferred method? It's the gold standard. There's, uh, you know, these urine strips you can pee on. But those aren't very accurate because as you start to become more efficient at using ketones, um, they won't show up as much on the in the urine because that's what your body is getting rid of as waste, right? So there's blood, breath, and urine uh, ketones, and blood is the is the gold standard way of testing. They got breathalyzers. Yeah, breathalyzers <laughs> now. <laughs> I've had wow. some people blow. Actually, there's there's some kind of effect with ketones where you if if you breathe it in your state of deep ketosis, it can show up on a breathalyzer. Like so. Just saying, if you get pulled over and be like, I'm in ketosis, wow. <laughs> I'm in ketosis, I swear, I haven't been drinking, officer. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, yeah, that's the gold standard way. Um, and, you know, the thing is, it, the keto flu, for example, which a lot of people can experience, is usually because people aren't prepared or they haven't done the research of how to do keto. They think it's butter, bacon, and cheese 
all day long and like, oh, I can eat as much fat as I want and I'll be in ketosis. It doesn't work that way. You know, you got, definitely got to do your research. Uh, check out the book if you want like a basic guide of how to do it and how to not experience the keto flu. If, you're, if you stay hydrated and you stay up on your, on your uh, electrolytes, so sodium, potassium, magnesium, uh, supplementing with those, so lots of salt can help get rid of any type of keto flu symptoms, which it can range from you know people feeling lightheaded or dizzy or feeling like they have brain fog um, and or, or cramping sometimes of the muscles. Um, and the reason people experience that is because you got to understand your body's been running off glucose for you know however old you are, 30, 40, 50 years for the most part, right? If you've been eating mostly carbs. And now all of a sudden you're saying, okay, no more glucose, we're doing keto. Your body hasn't adapted to that new environment yet of like, okay, how do we use ketones efficiently, right? Your body will learn. It's, you just got to be patient with yourself. So the first two weeks can be rough for some people, but I give some hacks in the book of how to overcome the keto flu uh, so that it, the transition is easier. What's the title of that section? 99 <laughs> Problems. 99 Problems, but keto ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, wow. Um, that's so fascinating, man. So the transition for people might take a day day or two yeah. for the average person. Yeah. And what's the difference with being keto adapted and being in ketosis? Because you talk about that, that in the book and there's a distinction. Yeah, there's a distinction. So once you become keto adapted, is usually your by that time your body has adapted to using ketones efficiently. And that could take anywhere from 30 to 60, maybe upwards of 90 days for some people staying consistent in a state of ketosis where your body will then learn how to adapt to these new uh, sources of fuel, right? The ketones, and once it be once it adapts, then you know your 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 efficiency of using ketones is elevated, and it's easier for your body to use ketones, and you feel optimal. That's where the euphoric feeling and the mental clarity really kicks in, and you're and that's why people love keto at that point is because they came for the weight loss or the fat loss, but they feel so mentally sharp by that point. And that's when you know you're in a, you're keto adapted versus just being in a state of ketosis. Yeah. And I think being keto adapted, it's easier to get back into it. Yes. If you do have a, you know, a tryst <laughs> with a donut or whatever it is. Yeah. Actually, first of all, I'm a very visual person, so mm -hmm. don't have a tryst with the donut. Okay. <laughs> um, but Real talk, you know, if we go outside, you know, if we have something that is higher in. So what is, first of all, what are those numbers, right? Mm. If we're looking at what, how many grams of carbohydrates can kick us out? Yeah. Talk about that. But first, there is a part of our brains that runs on glucose that yes. we need. So we need a certain amount. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, how much? What is that amount, and what can kick you out of ketosis? Yeah, that's a great question. So, here's the, here's the interesting thing: your body has the ability to, to to produce its own amount of glucose that it needs. So, if you stopped eating carbohydrates, like let's say you ate zero carbs, right? Your body, through a process called gluco, gluconeogenesis, can break down it, it and convert its own glucose for your brain, your liver. Uh, I think those are the only two that use glucose, that need glucose. Specifically, yeah. Yeah, specifically. So it, your body has this amazing capability to do it, even without carbohydrates. But what uh, you know, when you're eating the ketogenic diet, you can, you know, it's very individual. It's very bio-individual how much carbohydrates you can and can't have. And this is where people get so fixated on the numbers that it causes them stress. And then they think, oh, I went one gram over. I'm not, I'm not in ketosis. Yeah. <laughs> and they freak out over that. So generally what I say is when you're just getting started, no matter who you are, try 30 grams of total carbohydrates, mostly from vegetables, right? Not from like one donut mm -hmm. <laughs> or half a donut, you know, depending on what you're eating, but get those carbohydrates from, you know, quality sources, real food sources, things like spinach and kale and broccoli people and cauliflower. People don't realize that these vegetables are carb dominant foods. Yes, exactly. Right. But they're, you know, low glycemic and mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of, you know, like actual, especially when we're talking about like the net carbs. Yes. Right. Yeah. With the fiber and all that. So yeah. So just be, yeah, make sure you pick your, your, the quality over quantity when it comes to carbohydrates. Cause people will say, oh, you can't have fruit on keto. You can't have this or that on keto. And that's not necessarily the case. It's all about context. I could eat a piece of cake if it's 30 grams or less and stay in ketosis. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to waste my carbs on a piece of cake versus, you know, the, the nutrients that I'm getting from, you know, some type of vegetable. And so, um, you know, that, that, that number is going to range because I've been doing keto for so long, I could get away with, you know, some days 70 to 80 grams of carbs and still be in a state of ketosis. But someone that's sedentary that doesn't lift or work out a lot, they might need to be a little bit lower. So that's where the testing really comes in, and it's really important to find out what your carb threshold is so you know, okay, I can get away with 40 or 50 grams and still stay in a state of ketosis, 
and I feel great. I feel optimal. Same thing with protein too, right? Find out what your carb threshold is and your protein threshold is so that as you keep doing keto, you know what your optimal levels of these macronutrients are because the way I do keto now isn't the way I did keto when I first started, right? I've developed and evolved uh, the way I do keto because I've had to tweak it because there was a period of time where I was doing too low carb for too long and my body, for my body, didn't like it that low carb for so long. And so that's why sometimes you'll see me eat a sweet potato or potato with my with my keto meal. Mm-hmm. And I know that's great for my body because I've done my blood work, I've done testing, I test my ketone levels. And um, so that's what I'm saying. People are like, wait, you eat potatoes? Like that's not yeah. keto. I'm like, I do. <laughs> and it works. So just right. find what works best for you. And I teach you exactly how to do that in the book. Yes, yes, yeah. you do. And that's that's the thing, man. And that's why I want to have you on because you have much more holistic approach and a bigger perspective about it because you've actually done it. Mm-hmm. And you're somebody who's a high performer. You've got a lot going on. You, you lift, bro, as well, <laughs> yeah. you know, and just like, you have to be able to cater this stuff to your own life. And yeah. it just should sound obvious, but so many of us are, we're just looking for, just tell me what to do. Yeah, We've got to <laughs> take some personal authority in this matter. And it, it can be fun. You know, it can be like you've had this experience of experiencing it, you know, yeah. and, be, and really figuring things out for yourself. So I want to take a step back yeah. and talk about, you mentioned earlier about taking the exogenous ketones. Yes. So there are some things that can help us to get into that state a little bit quicker or use that mm-hmm. kind of fuel for our brain, for our liver, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you've got exogenous ketones, but also MCT oil. Yes. You use MCT oil, right? I do, which is a great source of healthy fats for our, our body and our, for our brains as well because MCT oil can get converted into ketones really quickly in the body. So it's a great energy source. And it's, it's you know, uh, and I, I don't know the science behind it, if this is true or not, but, you know, MCT oil, when taken, you know, isn't really stored as fat because it's converted to energy so quickly. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, and that's why our brains, especially as we get older, if you're older and you're listening to this and you've had issues, try supplementing with MCT oil, right, and see how your brain feels, especially if you didn't grow up eating coconut oil or uh, these healthy sources of, you know, where which is 60% um, MCT, right? Um, these, these healthy fats for our brains, you know, we didn't really grow up eating them. We grew up eating Captain Crunch and skim milk. (laughs) Even for butter, I had that parquet, man. Yeah. (laughs) Country crock. Country (laughs) crock. So, um, I love, uh, I'll use MCT oil powder, which is easier on my stomach versus just the straight up oil. Uh, but uh, the MCT oil, if I can get it, I'll put that in my coffee. Yeah. I'm hoping Starbucks one day comes out with (laughs) Oh, it's just a matter of time because of the demand, you know, this is something like every day for me as well. Yeah. I love MCT oil. And like you said, you know, this has the ability for, and we've got research now, improved cognitive function, mm-hmm. uh, improved energy, improved digestion. Yes. So these medium chain triglycerides are like for pathogenic bacteria, viruses, like it's like kryptonite, yeah. you know? So it's great for that as well. And like you mentioned about the digestion for the, the liquid, it yeah. can it can cause some like, you know, little rumbly, like un- discomfort. <laughs> you eat too much, you'll know it. <laughs> but I found that my body really loves the emulsified oil. Yes. And it tastes great and it's super easy to mix and try. Like I literally pack it with me. I throw it in my suitcase. <laughs> I love it so much. And so I use the one from On It. On It's a good and brand. We pumpkin love spice. those guys. Pumpkin spice the, is good. <laughs> the pumpkin spice. That's seasonal. Only in the fall though. You yeah, know? you can't have of it course. now. <laughs> and, but so I really love the... Almond milk latte, mm. which is a new one. You I haven't, haven't tried. I haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> and so I have that, you know, pretty much every day. Or I'll change it out with the vanilla, there's a cinnamon mm-hmm. swirl. But so it's emulsified, so it's like creamy. Yeah. And I, I don't have any digestion woes when I have it, and just like it just sustains me because today both of us were lifting. Yeah. yeah. We lifted like we got there, we popped up, we doing handstand pushups. <laughs> I got home and my wife was like, you know, so how was the workout? I was like, it feels so awesome to do to work out with somebody who could do what I do, you know. <laughs> and then she like Whoa. she got offended. <laughs> she did. I wasn't trying to offend her. Yeah, you didn't. Because she's to, my yeah. she's my gym partner. Like she's my gym buddy, and. You know, so I had to like make that right and just yeah. clarify, like, you know, no, baby, this is this, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> because, you know, like we, we push each other. It's just different. It's yeah. just like whatever I'm thinking I could do, you do it with me. The mm. muscle ups, the handstand push ups. And both of us were pretty much in a fasted state. You yeah. know, we had our coffee with the MCT oil yes. and we can do all that stuff. You know, I've deadlifted, you know, 400 pounds, same thing, just like off of a cup of coffee mm-hmm. and and I just started drinking coffee I think I told you this yeah. it was like a year and a half ago because uh-huh. of four sigmatic you know because um 
it just, for me, I had that neuro association from, like, with the parquet. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, around that same time, like, my grandparents, they would have, like, the country crock. And my grandmother had her Folgers coffee. Mm. And I sipped it one day. I think I was, like, five, mm -hmm. six. And I was just, I could not understand why you would drink it. <laughs> like, I, I just... I literally was like, what is wrong with them? Yeah. Well, There's something, they, is this part of being an adult? You drink stuff that's horrible? Yeah. That tastes disgusting? <laughs> and so I just never had it again mm -hmm. until my wife just kept raving about it. Like, just her experience of, of having it and not having that crash. So, yeah, huge fan. So I have those two things together <laughs> in the morning and both of us, and we still perform at a really high level. Yeah. You know, and also are giving our bodies the opportunity to use stored fat for fuel yep. <laughs> instead of carbon up. Because your body works on that LIFO FIFO, mm -hmm. right? Last in, first out. Oh, I love first that. in, first out. I love that. <laughs> right. So if we've got um coming in carbs and it's a very readily available fuel source, yep. why would your body take the effort to break down fat yeah. and use it for fuel? It's a very arduous process. It doesn't want to do it. Yeah. You know, so just another reason I love this uh, approach. So again, I want to take another step back and ask you about oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. I'm on it, emulsified <laughs> MCT oil, guys. Get yourself some. I love it so much. One of my favorite things. I use it di literally daily. Uh, go to onit.com forward slash model. That's O N N I T dot com forward slash model. You get 10% off everything. They're emulsified MCT oils. They have the classic MCT oil as well. Uh, the Alpha Brain. I know we're both big fans of mm -hmm. that. Just head over there, check them out. I promise you're going to love it. It's one of those great benefits, especially for a ketogenic approach. So check them out. Onit.com forward slash model. So I want to step back and ask you, you mentioned salt mm. and you just kind of ran through it. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, wait a minute, why is this important for uh, a ketogenic approach? Mm -hmm. it, I think it's such like might be the most important yeah. thing we quote supplement and really focus on. Yeah. Why is that? Well, first of all, the interesting thing with salt is similar to fat. They've both been demonized for a period of time, right? If we've been taught fat is bad for us. We've been taught salt is bad for us. And so it's it's kind of uh, ironic that salt is just as essential as you know eating fat uh, for our bodies. And so <clears throat> salt's really important because here's the thing: when you switch over to keto, you eat mostly fat. Your body's not retaining as much water. So your body, you know, the first day or so, you're you're peeing like a racehorse because uh, your body's expelling a lot of water. And with that lost water, you're losing minerals as well, essential minerals that your body needs. And one of those is sodium, right? Salt. Um, <clears throat> and so it's really really important to replenish. Uh, that salt so you feel optimal so you know around two teaspoons per day is what I tell people is what you should be getting in and most people are like oh so uh, more salt so there's a couple more sprinkles I'm like no like a half put a half teaspoon in your hand you know look at what that feels like lick it and chug a bunch of water afterwards almost all your keto flu symptoms will be gone right and that's one of the little hacks you can use to stay hydrated and balance out your electrolytes now I'm not talking about table salt not the stuff that's, you know, that's perfectly white because that's not what salt looks like when it comes from the earth. And, Bleached and, you know, bromated, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah a, and they even add dextrose sometimes now to sweeten it a little bit or add it as a, like a preservative to like for flavoring as well. And so it's 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 not – that's not the type of salt I'm talking about. I'm talking about real salt, right? There's pink Himalayan salt. There's real salt. There's a mine in Utah that I love. It has all the trace minerals still intact. If it's not white, it's like pinkish and – Specks of brown and black, that's the good salt. So you literally, when you said real salt, so that's a brand. Yeah, Redmond is the brand, real salt. You've been there, haven't you? I've been to the mine. You could literally go up to the walls and lick the sides of the walls, and it's salt. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it? I did it. I did it. I grabbed some <laughs> off the ground and, like, crushed it in my hands, and I have these salt rocks at home, and that's literally what they do is they take it out of this mine that's unpolluted, and it was an old seabed, you know, I don't know how many millions of years old, and they just put it in these bottles, and boom, it's, that's the kind of salt you want, right? And you'll feel so much better if you take in five to seven grams of salt per day on the ketogenic diet. Wow. That's, it's so simple, but, you know, like you said, it is, it's yeah. been, well, first thing is this, in relationship to why it would be so important, when you're not taking in those carbohydrates, like you said, you're going to be expelling a lot of water because the name itself, carbohydrate, uh, yeah, carbohydrate, <laughs> And every gram of carbohydrate is going to have your body store about four grams of water. Mm -hmm. And so when you're eliminating a lot of those carbohydrates, so that's one of the things people see is just like they're losing weight. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, a lot of water yeah. as well. And when you're losing that water, you're losing those minerals. Yeah. And also salt really draws in water. Not, like it pulls water into your cells yeah. as well. So um, I, I think about us like, 
you know, there are these pretty strong theories that we evolved, like came from the ocean at some point, yeah. you know, like we're basically we're Aquaman, you, you know, <laughs> basically, yeah. you know, we're basically, what are they called? They're uh, Atlanteans. Yeah. Atlanteans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, but we, I mean, as far as like a single cell organism yeah. and just kind of evolve from there. And I, I see that we've taken and put the, the aquarium is inside of us now. Mm. Like we're still so like we have that salt balance that we really need to be an ideal kind of, uh, water, con we're water being yeah. really, you know, we're mostly water. And so, yeah, I can't stress the importance of it. And I would say to have, just like your portfolio with your money, mm -hmm. have a portfolio of diversity in your salt. Yeah. You know, so like the Himalayan, you've got uh, the Celtic salt, you've yeah. got the real salt. Yeah. There's like special like Hawaiian black yeah. salt. Like there's yeah. all these different ones. They're going to have different benefits. And this is something that your cells need this. It was given a bad name mainly because of blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and the, the thing is you need it to modulate your blood pressure. But of course, like if you do overdo processed salt, yeah, it can elevate your blood pressure. Yeah. But that's not the only causative factor yeah. as well. So it's just like, you know, we get these bad pieces of data and it just gets, you know, ran over in the media. Yeah, 100%. So. And your body will let you know if you've had too much salt. Like you, It's not like you, you can't. Right. Your body will tell you if you've had too much salt. You know when you've had too much yeah. salt, right? Yeah. You not sugar, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, we don't have that mechanism. Maybe. That's so funny, man. That's so true. You know, uh -huh. you'd be thirsty. You know, you'd be more thirsty. First of all, that's one yeah. sign. So, um, man, this is so good. I want to talk about some of these myths. Yeah. <laughs> with the keto diet. And I think you, what did you put, six in here? Yeah, I six think so. Myths. <laughs> so let's go through a couple of these. Uh, again, there's six in the book. One of them is that all that fat you're eating, mm. now you, you're eating fat, <laughs> will clog your arteries, raise your blood pressure. That's another thing that's going to raise your mm -hmm. blood pressure, and your heart's going to uh, just basically explode. Yeah. So that, <laughs> what's, what's up there, man? Is this... Is this, is there any truth to it or? Yeah, this is interesting. I remember like hearing you talk about the first time you ate coconut oil, you thought you were literally going to have a heart attack because yep. <laughs> you're like, it's going to clog my arteries. And I remember when I was on the Dr. Oz show, we had a little setup of, you know, uh, you know, butter, you know, they use butter as fat. And he's like, even doctors, you know, he's like, I cut up, uh, cut up on people and I see these, these, these fats clogging people's arteries and it looks like this. And like, and so they think eating fat you know, clogs your arteries and gives you a heart attack. And we've been taught that for so long, right? And even doctors, you know, will still say, hey, stay away from fat. And there there might be some instances for, for some people uh, to be to be careful of that, but it's just it's not true. If you eat fat in the absence of carbohydrates, right? If you're eating high fat plus high carb, you're going to be in trouble. That's probably where you're going to get some kind of illness. I mean, when I did Fit to Fat to Fit and I was gained 75 pounds, you combine pizza and donuts and <laughs> yeah. uh, these high carb but high fat foods as well, that's where we're going to get into trouble. And that's what the older studies were based off of was they didn't factor in carbohydrates. They just factor in how much fat you were consuming. So they said, hey, higher fat diets will cause clogged arteries. But if you eat fat in the absence of carbohydrates like keto, it's perfectly fine for you know most people. And so uh, it's just these one of these things that we have to overcome mentally mm -hmm. because like salt, we've been taught fat is has been bad for us for so long. One of those things, you know, m mixing those together mm. a lot, and they the thing is they probably taste the best. They taste too. really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is you know you see an increase in things like advanced glycation end products, right? Yeah. Ages, like the acronym is literally ages, and inflammation and all these mm -hmm. things they just don't really mix well. And also, of course, like for the most part, people are doing like these processed versions of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, like if you're having some sweet potato with some salmon, like you're gonna <laughs> yeah. be all right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, man, that's. That's really interesting because it's still, it is it is a fear. It mm -hmm. is definitely a fear, but it's really unwarranted. And I was just thinking about when they talk about the, you know, I see this in the arteries and it looks like butter. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, they call it like it's calcification, right, mm -hmm. or plaque. Yes. What causes plaque on your teeth? Is it butter? <laughs> Straight up. Like, let's think about this yeah. for a second. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't got to make this up. Like, just... <laughs> you know, it's just, it's so Captain Obvious. Yeah. And we know that sugar is this kind of catalyst. And I did an episode, like, masterclass on this and talking about liver health and how uh, eating too many carbohydrates and, you know, sugar yeah. and, you know, carbohydrates can literally get your liver to start, of course, printing out fat, you know, mm -hmm. it's lipogenesis, but start creating these molecules, these VLDL particles, mm -hmm. which are really the culprits, yeah. really big culprits. And we're talking about plaque and... 
heart disease and damaged arteries, right? It's not yeah. from eating fat. It's from eating carbohydrates. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Thank you, man. That's <laughs> yeah. one, one myth that you talked about in the book. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this one, man. Okay. Because they, these two things seem to be a little bit synonymous a lot of times is Atkins. Yes. <laughs> so keto is just Atkins repackaged. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one because so many people ask like, isn't this is this just the same thing? And you know, even Julie Michaels recently kind of is like, oh, keto is just Atkins repackaged, right? Um, and so the interesting thing is, you know, Atkins what it was was a low carbohydrate diet, and it didn't really you know factor in you know how much fat you were eating or the the goal wasn't to be in in a state of ketosis. It was just to cut out the carbohydrates, right? And people saw amazing results. But it was more of like a, you know, just eat meat, high protein, high fat um, type of diet. Now, that doesn't guarantee that you'll reach a state of ketosis, right? Some people over consuming protein can knock them out of ketosis, actually. Uh, not everybody, but some people through a process called gluconeogenesis. Um, and that level of protein is different for each person. So just because you did the Atkins diet doesn't mean you were in a state of ketosis or just because you cut, cut out carbohydrates. So um, keto, the goal with keto is to be in a ketogenic state where you're burning fat as fuel. And so that's that's how they're different. It's more of a high fat, moderate protein, low carb approach. Mm -hmm. And that is that what that does is it mimics fasting and then that triggers your body to produce ketones as an alternative fuel source. Yeah. And most keto approaches and especially yours complete keto yeah. is also pro vegetable yes exactly which is not <laughs> something that you would think about in, in relationship to atkins yeah and you know seeing my friends you know I, when i first <laughs> uh saw somebody doing atkins like i didn't know it was a thing yeah and this is when i was struggling with my own health and you know my has having the you know degenerative spinal issues but mm -hmm. i go over to my friend his name is floyd shout out to floyd if you're listening <laughs> and we play madden you know yeah. you know just way too much <laughs> <laughs> and I came over one day, he, you know, he was always kind of just struggling with his weight, you know, ever yeah. since he was a kid and he's trying to figure something out. And I came over, he's got these two really crappy burger patties, like the frozen. It's from like the box that's like multiple. It's got like the paper, yes, yeah. you know, over it. <laughs> and clearly it, it, this cow has never even seen grass before. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> definitely not a grass fed. And the fake craft singles, right? Mm, because even oh, on craft, yeah. it says cheese product yeah <laughs> it's not enough cheese in it to be called cheese legally and he's just i'm just like where because i've never seen a burger without a bun in that in that yeah. point in my life and i'm just like where's your bun yeah right where is your bun like where is he just he's like atkins bro <laughs> and i was like okay cool he lost weight yeah he lost weight but it didn't end well yeah. you know like it, it it all came back around mm. you know and i think that you know it's 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 if done properly, a yeah. lot of these things can work for people, yeah. but we have to mind the details. Yeah. You have to mind the details. And with keto, with keto, we've got to mind the details. And that's why I'm so grateful that you put this together. Yeah. So let's hit one Thank more you. of these myths. Again, you've got six here, but we'll do one more. This myth says it's not safe to do keto long term. Yeah. What, what do we say about that? Well, because there's not a ton of long-term studies uh, where we studied, you know, people doing the ketogenic diet for 20, 20 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and, but I know doctors personally that have been living a strict ketogenic lifestyle for decades and totally fine, totally healthy. Because what people need to understand is keto is a natural metabolic state that our bodies were designed to be able to tap into if we ran out of glucose or if we ran out of food, yeah. right? And so eating eating a ketogenic diet there's not there's not this unhealthy side of it where if you do it for more than x amount of days you're going to die your body shuts down that's, no you're just fueling your body with a different fuel source that's all that's happening and so um you know if you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint if we didn't have keto we would not be able to survive more than a few days without food right <laughs> and so it's a totally natural metabolic state to be in and i think people worry like oh well if you do it for long term this that can happen um, but like I said, I know doctors personally who have been doing it for decades, totally fine, totally healthy. But I think for humans, we were designed to run off of both sources of fuel very efficiently. And so I think, you know, optimally being uh, in a state of ketosis, but also dipping in and out from time to time is good for the body, right? So it's about metabolic flexibility and being able to be efficient at both fuel sources, versus just one or the other. And so for me, I choose to dip in and out of ketosis. I'm not in strict keto 100% of the time, right? I get keto adapted, right, from time to time for 30 days straight, for example. And then after that, you know, I'll do intermittent, I talk about this in my book, intermittent keto diet, where maybe 
you know, three or four times a year, I'm strict keto for 30 days. We were talking about this, like I cycle things. I, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of that because I think that that's how we evolve. That's what our genes expect us to do. Yeah. And yeah, and that's another thing that's highlighted in here, which the book itself is beautiful. You know, the recipes <laughs> and the pictures, but this book is a lot more than a typical recipe book. So why is that? What What is different about your book that uh, people need to know about? Yeah, yeah, thanks for letting me talk about that. And this is what, you know, there's a ton of diet books, there's a ton of keto books out there, what makes mine different? Um, and that's the word complete keto, right? Uh, complete, uh, it's a guide to help people more so on the mental and emotional side. Because here's what I learned, you know, when I did Fit to Fat to Fit, you could give someone the best meal plans, you can give them the best workouts, you can give them the best recipes, you can give them all the science that they need to know of how to transform their physical body. But we've been talking about that for years and decades in the fitness industry, and that's not what people struggle with, in my opinion. It's not lack of knowledge, right? Yes, there's a physical 30-day program in here with recipes and the science behind the ketogenic diet and how it works for your body, but transformation is so much more than that. And this is what I learned from Fit to Fat to Fit. Transformation is mental and emotional for people. Um, and that's why I chose to focus on that so much in the book. Uh, so I think people are coming to this book for the ketogenic, like the program and to train uh, to lose fat. But I think they'll soon realize that it's so much more of a mindset shift. And that's what I want to teach people how to do. And that's what I'm trying to do in the fitness industry is to change the game by bringing empathy, more respect, and a better understanding of what people go through uh, on a psychological level so that we can have a better understanding of what they're going through so we can better help them. It's not like, hey, just eat less and work out. What's wrong with you? That was, that's was that been so many people's approaches. And that was my approach as a trainer before until I did Fit to Bed to Fit and I realized it's it's people struggle on the mental and emotional side. It's overcoming challenges or trauma as a kid. It's that emotional connection to food that we underestimate. We think, oh, what's wrong with you? Just put down the soda. But you wouldn't go up to a drug dealer and tell them, hey, stop doing drugs. What's wrong with you? Because we know it's a serious addiction. Same thing with food addiction. And this is where my eyes have been opened uh, over the past you know, a few years of doing fit to fit to fit on the mental and emotional side of transformation, but also on the personal development side. And that's why I, you know, I talk about this on our last podcast, going through a divorce <clears throat> really forced me to uh, find a way to um, own my story and embrace vulnerability so that I could be whole, right, <clears throat> for the first time in my life. And so all those personal development things that I learned from books by Brene Brown and working with a life coach, I've tied in because I've tied into Complete Keto because um, – you know, uh, helping people with physical transformation, you know, we've done that before, right? Uh, helping people get skinny, yes, it makes them happy to a certain degree. But we realize that's not the ultimate source of happiness. Otherwise, everyone that was skinny and had a six-pack would be happy, right? And there's so much more to happiness and fulfillment than that, than just that. So if I could help people with a complete transformation on the mental and emotional and spiritual side while they're working on a physical transformation, then people learn how to love themselves where they're at now while they're working on the best version of themselves. And that's what I intend to do with complete keto. And that's why, you know, no one else is really talking about the mental and emotional side. Yeah. You know, it's overlooked in, in this industry. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's here, Thanks, man. man. And Thank you. you did a wonderful job, and I'm super happy for you because I think this is a big next step for you and your impact that you're making in people's lives. And marrying these two together, giving yeah. some great advice and a template on the nutrition side, but also that mental and emotional support. Yeah. So, man, just, um, just appreciate you so Thank much you, for, for putting it together. Can you let everybody know where they can pick up the book and where they can connect with you online? Yeah, so it's a complete keto is available at all the, the major retailers, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Um, you can go to my website, completeketo.fit2fat2fit.com, and we're giving away a ton of free stuff to help you on the your journey. Um, you know, downloads, uh, PDFs, so that uh, it's not just about the book. It's it's more than that. And we're creating an online support team uh, for you uh, through a private Facebook group. So go to completeketo.fit2fat2fit.com to order the book and learn more about those things that I was talking about. And then if you want to follow me on social media, I think I'm pretty entertaining, but it just depends. <laughs> it's at fit to fat to fit with a number two. <laughs> yeah, perfect, man. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks, um, Sean. This has been amazing, man. So good. And I'm always just grateful to see you in a hangout. We're about to go get some food. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be a keto meal. It's going to be keto. But it's it's okay. going to be delicious. <laughs> if it's not we keto, we're not taking pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't happen. If, if it's not posted, it didn't happen. <laughs> awesome, man. Exactly, so again, man. thank you so much for coming to hang out. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. you, man. You're awesome. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode. 
man, so many huge insights here. And I love the way that we close this episode and talking about it's not about the nutrition approach. That is definitely a piece of it. But what's really going to get us there and create a sustainable lifestyle where we're healthy and happy long term, we need to have a transformation with our with our psyche, with our mental and emotional well-being and just running up to somebody and telling them, just stop eating the cookies. Just put it. But wait, was it Arnold? He's like, put the cookie down. Right. <laughs> You can't just do that. Like, that's not going to work for the vast majority of people. And as you mentioned, like coming up to, you know, a drug addict and just saying, you know, don't do dope. Or, you know, I remember Adam Sandler on, I think it was Billy Madison. It was like, Shabba do, you booze, you lose, punk. Remember that. You know, it's just like messing with these kids on the playground. You can't do that to get people to change. You know, it's more getting connected and being empathetic and understanding and putting, seeing things from people's perspective. And Drew is somebody who's really seeking to do that. And we can take a, a, a note from him on that and employing that in our own lives. And also taking that and not just for ourselves, but also for the people that we care about. So really excited about this Complete Keto. Uh, if you're listening to this, it'll still be pre-order available. But if you listen to this a couple of days after this comes out, it will be available to go grab at your local bookstore. Go to, go pre-order the book, first of all, because it's probably going to sell out, to be honest. Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Is Books A Million around still? There's different bookstores out there. Uh, but definitely support your local bookstores if you can. Go and grab a physical copy. And I think you're just going to really enjoy the book. Just the writing style is so digestible. The food is digestible, and it's just a really great uh, tool for us to have access to. It's not overcomplicating things because it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. This is something we should all know about because it's a tool that, as a human being, this is something that your genes have a great affiliation towards, and it's something that we all need to know about and have access to should we desire to use it and or need it. And I appreciate you so much for tuning into the show today. If you got a lot of value out of this, please share it out with your friends and family on social media. Tag me and tag Drew. Let everybody know what you thought of the episode. Let Drew know what you thought about the episode. And I appreciate that so very much. So much good stuff coming up for you. All right. I, I don't think you really understand it. We are not playing games. So many incredible show topics that are very, very much needed to talk about. And also incredible guests are coming for you very, very soon. So be ready. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.